Hello friends. Today I'm going to try and tell you about House of Leaves. So before we get started on trying to talk about House of Leaves, I think it's always important to remind everyone or for those of you who are new here or new to my reviews slash let's talk about videos on how I structure them. I'm weird about spoilers. So whenever I do a review or I talk about a book, I leave as much information out as possible. I don't want to spoil the experience for you. I want you to experience it for yourself. I'll give you some very minor details here and there. For the most part, it is spoiler free. I'm not going to give you a beat by beat of what happens, but I will give you my thoughts, my takeaways, and then you can decide whether or not it may be for you or not for you. Now, with all that said, let's get into House of Leaves. I've heard House of Leaves described as many different things. Pretentious, brilliant, creative, garbage. Uh, <laughs> I've heard a lot, every, everything you can think of, I've heard House of Leaves described as. So who's right and who's wrong? Yes, it can be all these things. It can be all these things at once. And there were times when I thought it was pretentious. There were times when I thought it was brilliant and there's times I thought it was garbage and creative. It runs the gamut of all these different uh, reactions when you read this book. So let's also discuss how you read House of Leaves because it's different than any of the book I've read. I mean, I haven't read that many books, but it is very unique. So in the book, when you flip through it, you'll see a lot of pages that are have weird text on them or no text at all, weird layouts, and you think, what the hell is going on here? What's going on with this book? Is there something wrong? Did I get a a print error, but what's, what's happening here. So you read this book differently than you read other books. So what happens is when you read this book on the bottom, there's some footnotes and these footnotes will direct you to the, the back, the appendix and the exhibit section, which is about the last 120 pages or so of the book. So way back here, the exhibit section begins and it'll reference articles, it'll reference letters, it'll reference exhibits, photographs, scientific articles. I mean, there's a ton of different stuff. So you'll bounce back and forth. And this took me a little while to get used to because I'm used to reading a book from page one to the end. And that's standard, right? This book, sometimes I would sit there and read and my page count would only go up 30 pages because I spent a lot of time reading stuff in the back or other, I would jump back and forth. And I would be reading for a long time, but I didn't feel like I made any progress. I just felt like I'm like walking through mud. So it took me a little while to get into a rhythm, into a groove of how to read the book. I think that was a big part of it is how do I read this book? How to, I kind of had to get a hang of, of like a rhythm going. And that took me a little while. It took me about 200 pages or so to really feel comfortable in how to read this book. And I have, before I started House of Leaves, I know that there's some people that don't read the, uh, the footnotes. They don't go into the appendix. They don't go into the exhibits. They just read the story from front to back. And I thought about doing that because it sounded like a lot, but I am so glad I did not do that. And if you're thinking of doing that, I would highly, highly suggest do not do that. You, you will rob yourself of this experience of reading this book. And it is, it, this is a classic example, classic example of this book is not for everyone because some people absolutely hate this book and some people love it and some people think it's okay or whatever. There's, there's either, it seems like there's either one side or the other. So what is House of Leaves about? In a, in a nutshell, it's about a house that is a different size on the inside than it is on the outside. And it goes from there. There's two different storylines that we follow, but there's a ton of information. You learn so much about these characters, about their families, about their history, more than you'd ever think you'd know. Not only about the characters, you also learn about uh, other facts. I'm not, I'm not going to get into spoilers, but there are some articles, like scientific articles about specific, specific topics that go on for a little too long sometimes, and they get kind of annoying because you learn about a certain topic and you think, this is kind of neat, and then 20 pages later, you're like, okay, this is enough. <laughs> it's like, I've had enough. Let's move on. So there, there are those moments where you feel like you're just, it's a slog. You feel like you're not getting anywhere. You feel like the story's not moving and you feel like you're on a side mission. You're not getting, you're not working towards 
you're not working towards understanding what's going on, who these, what's going on with these characters, their families, their personal relationships. There's a lot happening here. So you do get on a lot of side quests and that's usually a big pet peeve of mine is side quests. But here, the, the strange thing about House of Leaves is when I was reading it, I was frequently annoyed. I was, <laughs> I was, I was annoyed a lot of the time because I, I would be reading these, these articles about these scientific articles or these letters or these other weird topics. And I thought, this is like, oh, this is so annoying. But when I finished it, and when I looked back on the whole experience from front to back, from beginning to end, I thought, wow, that's, that's really neat. And there's so much hidden in this book. There's hidden messages that you can decode. There's little markings on the pages that you can, you can look for and find that have meaning. I mean, there's just a ton of stuff that, I mean, I've, I read it from front to back, but I feel like there's so much more I can, I can find if I really dig through this book. This is the kind of thing that you want to read. You want to read it every so often because you know, you're going to find more and more and more. And when I say coded messages is, I mean, there's coded messages. There's, there's letters that you can decode to find uh, really creepy, <laughs> really creepy messages in it. Uh, the book itself isn't too scary. I think there are some really eerie and creepy moments, but it sounds silly, but on the back where there are some really strange text, uh, and the text looks really weird, like on the corner of the page right there. And it, it looks like a gimmick. I thought it was kind of gimmicky at first, but when you're reading the story, the text does a great job of immersing you in what's happening. And it, it sounds, it sounds goofy, I know, but it really works. <laughs> and while it worked for me, I know it won't work for everyone. This is a book that just some people just don't take to, and that's okay. Uh, this is, like I said, a classic example of it's not for everyone. Some people really love it. Some people really hate it. It's, uh, it's it seems like a hot, it's a hot or cold kind of thing. If you are thinking about reading this book, my biggest suggestion would be to take your time. Don't rush through it. Take your time. Enjoy it. Look at the appendix, read all the, read all the articles, read all the letters, read all, look at all the exhibits, take your time because there's so much that you'll miss if you rush through this book, just slow down, take your time with it and enjoy it. We had a group read for this book back in October for Halloween. And on Halloween day, we had a discussion with Ashley from read now sleep later and Lauren from paperback empire. And we talked for a good two hours. There's so much that I did not catch that Lauren caught or that Ashley caught. And it, there's just so much in this, in these pages, there's so much in this book that it, it's when I'm so glad I read it with the group because there's so much you want to talk about when you're done. There's so much that goes, that goes into this book. The fact that someone took the time to compile all this together, to, to make it work the way it does. In my mind, it's, it, it's, it's wild. It is so cool that someone did this, they have my respect. And it is a book I will be reading every October. I have a discussion on every Halloween day for as long as I'm doing this book two thing. So uh, if you're interested in, in reading it with us in October of 2022, you have quite a while to plan, but uh, we're, I plan to have another read, another discussion just because it's so much fun talking about this book. And like I said, when you look back at the entire experience, it is worth it in my mind. Now, not everyone agrees, but if you are curious about this book, I would say, read it, give it a try, stick with it, give it a good, give it a good chance because I think it's worth it. Uh, it was worth the read. It was worth the really annoying and pretentious articles. Uh, it was, it was worth the journey for me. Now, not everyone will agree with that, but I would say, try it out. Just give it a shot. See if it's for you. If not, then I'm sure your local used bookstore or a friend or somewhere would love to have a copy of it because it is one of those books that are, are set after. So uh, give it a shot, see if you like it. Uh, you, maybe you'll take to it, maybe you won't, but if you're curious, give it a try. So those are my thoughts on House of Leaves. Thank you for watching. If you've read House of Leaves, let me know down below what you would rate it or if you, what suggestions do you have for people who have not read it, who are interested in reading it. I'm really curious to hear what everyone's thoughts are on uh, this journey, and I call it a journey because it does feel like a journey. This book feels like a journey. There's a, lot, there's a lot that happens. You learn a lot about these characters. It's 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 wild. So let me know down below what your thoughts are and what your suggestions are. How did you read it? Did you read the appendix? 
Did you, uh, did you skip it? Did you read all the articles? I'm curious to know. And everyone seems to have, it, it, when you finish it, you feel like you're part of a club. Like you feel like you're part of a, of a group that said, you know, I, I finished house of leaves. So if you're thinking about reading house of leaves, or if you've already read it, I hope this video is helpful until next time I will talk to you soon.